What if you could build a static site with thousands of pages, but still update content in a matter of seconds without needing to rebuild or redeploy your site? Today, I'm gonna to talk about incremental static regeneration, which allows you to do just that. But first, let's talk about why this is even a problem in the first place. What's the issue with static site generation? So static content is great. We can generate some HTML, we can push it up to a global edge network. It's fast, it's resilient to downtime, and it's easy to deploy. If you're trying to build a static site with thousands or millions of pages, it's not really feasible to pre-render all of these pages at build time, leading to much longer builds. For a lot of sites, this is a complete non-starter. We can't have really long builds because our content needs to be updated more quickly than that. Using a CMS allows content editors to manage and publish content separate from the code, which is great, but it's a little difficult with static-only solutions. If I'm a news site and I have thousands of articles and I need to publish something that's breaking news, I can't wait for those thousand articles to build before people see that breaking news. And that's why today I wanna to talk about incremental static regeneration. I've covered it a little bit in other videos, but I really wanna go more in depth in this one. So simply put, ISR allows content editors and developers to use static generation on a per page basis and update content without having to rebuild the entire site. So you get to retain all of those benefits of static that I talked about without the drawbacks of having longer build times. The great part about ISR is that you're equipped to make that trade off yourself on how fast you want your builds to be. So you can choose between having maybe faster builds and you pre-generate less static pages or having more files pre-generated and cached ahead of time. So let's actually walk through an example of an e-commerce product page that uses ISR. Next.js can define a revalidation time per page. So for our e-commerce product page, let's set it at 60 seconds. So on the left at zero seconds, the initial request to the product page shows the cached version, the generated version of that page that has the initial price of $3. When more requests come in to this page between zero seconds and 60 seconds, they're being served from the cache. They're hitting that static page that was already generated. But let's say that during this time, somebody updated the price in the CMS. Now it's 350. After that 60 second window, the next request would still show that cache page. And we call this the stale page. In the background, ISR is going to trigger a regeneration of the page and fetch the latest information from the CMS. So fetch that new price of 350. Once that page has been successfully statically generated, ISR will then invalidate the cache and show the new updated product page. If that background regeneration failed, the old page would remain unaltered. We wouldn't swap it out with a broken page. ISR works out of the box with Next.js, so let's take a look at some code. For example, let's say we're looking at pages slash products slash id.js. So inside of the pages folder, we have our file system based routing and we're using id with brackets because it's a dynamic route. So we can pass in any id we want here. Then we're using Next.js's static site generation methods, get static props and get static paths. So get static props is fetching the information for this page, the information about a product that we are determining based on the ID. So we pull the ID from the URL, we use that to fetch information from the database about our product. And now you notice that with revalidate, here's where we're telling Next.js to use ISR and set the revalidation time for this page to 60 seconds. Next, if we scroll down, we can see get static paths which is telling our application all of the different products that are available. And we fetch, let's say the first 1,000 products. We'll get the top 1,000 products. We'll use those to generate the different paths that we want to expose to Next.js based on the product ID. And we return those to get static paths. Then with this fallback method, we're telling Next.js when you try to access a path of a product that doesn't exist, we want to server render that page on the fly. So you server render the page, it fetches the new information back from the database, and it statically generates a version of that on the fly, which means that every subsequent visitor who visits that new product page sees the new cached version. 
So it doesn't server render every time, it's only that first time. So that sounds pretty neat in theory, but let's take a look at an actual example. I have this example e-commerce application built using Next.js and Tailwind, and you'll notice that on the home page, I have a bunch of different content. So specifically notice this title that says holiday ready. When I go into a CMS, in this example, we're using content stack, I have these different modular blocks. And one of them, the title is holiday ready. So instead, let's say incremental static regeneration and publish this to production. So we have different languages here. We'll just do English and we'll push it to all of our different environments right now. We hit publish. We go back to our application. The first request triggers the revalidation, and then the second one shows the updated content. No rebuilds of the site were necessary, and we immediately saw new content from the CMS. What's really cool is this isn't limited to just text either. It could be anything behind the CMS. For example, if we go back to our CMS and content stack, and we look at our page, you notice we have this ad banner at the top before we see our text incremental static regeneration. So let's switch the order where we want this to be the first block that we see on the screen. Again, we will publish our content out to all of the different environments right now, hit publish. The first request will show the stale, and then the next one actually changes the entire layout of this page. So now we see this ad banner down below. This is so amazing, it's so powerful what you can do with this how composable your sites can be when you have dynamic data in a CMS, while also still keeping your build times really low. Now, while ISR is really cool, that doesn't mean that it's the right solution for everything. For example, the Facebook news feed. When I visit Facebook, I want to see the most up-to-date pictures of Siamese cats on every refresh of the page. I need this content immediately personalized to my needs. You're never gonna wanna show stale content in this example, and you're probably better off server rendering, and potentially using cache control headers on top. One more thing to keep in mind with server rendering is that you're actually blocking the user from seeing your page. So you wanna make sure that your API or database is responding quickly so that your user isn't staring at a loading spinner in a white screen waiting for information. Another place the ISR might not make sense is if you have a really small static site. If it only takes a minute to rebuild your entire site, why go through the extra hoops to use something like ISR when you can just rebuild the whole thing? The last thing I wanna talk about is that ISR is actually designed to be more than just a cache. So let's say I deploy some bug and I need to revert immediately. When I revert my code back to the old version, I'm able to keep and persist all of those statically generated pages that I'd already built. I don't lose those when I revert back. Now reverts and persisting these static files aren't actually happening at the framework level like in Next.js, but they're happening at the deployment and host level like a Vercel. Hopefully this video has helped clear up what incremental static regeneration is. I'm gonna include some links in the description for more examples and resources to learn more about ISR. And feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions on how it works with Next.js or on Vercel. Thanks so much for watching.